Hi guys, it's Rob from Access. We're at E3 and I'm with Lorne Lanning. Nice to meet you, Lorne. How are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you doing? How's your E3 going so far? Well, it just started, but so far, so good. We got the game running in time at 60 frames per second. Play is cool then. Yeah. So, new and tasty. This isn't, this isn't just an HD remaster of the no. game. You built the game from yeah. the ground up. Yeah. How, how has that been? Well, <coughs> originally, uh, we archived all the assets to the original game, but they were all pre-rendered, so it was running bitmaps. Yeah. And it, but it was all 3D models that were actually quite high res. We archived all of those in 1997. We pulled all of that out. That was like $3 million worth of databases. And from that, we were able to rescan and build everything. So we got a, a quick boost you know, for a lot of assets, a lot of the worlds, the environments, all of that, that gave us a template, a very quick template, to get a lot of progress done faster. And then from there, we still had to invest you know, a few million more dollars because we, we, we brought it over onto a Unity engine. And so now Abe is running in real-time 3D. It's not a flip screen, it's continuous side-scrolling. It's the same game template, same game design, but we had to bring in a lot of new design features to accommodate higher speed, yeah. multiple difficulty levels, you know, trophies, leaderboards, all of these things. Uh, but particularly dynamic lighting, dynamic animation, uh, ragdoll. You know, we added, we really wanted to, we really wanted to sort of culminate the day of the platformer, you know, in a high-tech, yeah beautiful way and uh, you know you guys will be the judge so Abe's been on a really interesting journey specifically on PlayStation brands because he obviously yeah. he was on PlayStation 1 originally and then it kind of went away and uh, just uh, emotionally for you how does it feel to see a finally back on PlayStation 4 just looking better than ever it must, it must be pretty satisfying well you know it's wonderful and, and the amazing thing is Sony's been really wonderful and when we originally released the game released the game back in 97 there was a number of people that would be in sales or marketing or biz dev at Sony, and they're still there today. And so when we brought this game back, they were they were excited and they were you know uh, supportive and they've you know they've given us a booth with some kiosks to play here. It's extremely generous of them. They didn't have to do that. So for us, it's very thrilling. Uh, you know, I think the PlayStation 4 is just an amazing machine, and being out there on it with Abe that was kind of introduced back with the first PlayStation 1. You know, it's a very nostalgic feeling for us. You know, we're getting a little teary-eyed on it. But we're excited. It must be also really exciting for you to have this whole new generation of gamers who've never really experienced Oddworld or A before. Um, yeah. What would you say to those gamers? What can they expect? Because it's not your, you know, it's not a traditional kind of platform. You know, it's got these no, really weird quirks yeah. to it. And, you know, what can guys expect who've never played Oddworld before? Well, what, one of the things that's a key signature to Oddworld was we always wanted to be very high in satire and comedy and humor, you know, but at the same time, very brutal, you know. So, so we, we try to find this balance between sort of charming and endearing and empathetic, you know. Abe was always about what, what if he could save people and Reddit, rather than just killing people? And so we were like, well, can empathy equal rewards? You know, so that's the basis of his character. He's unarmed, he's very sweet. He's trying to save other characters that live in a, you know, totally fascist meat processing plant where they're gonna chop up all the workers eventually, right? So he's out to save his people and saving them through this, this series of meat saws and all these things is, is brutal, you know, it's hilariously brutal. And then, uh, and then we, take him out on this longer journey you know so he's really the classic hero's myth journey the story we always got a lot of acknowledgement for how much attention we paid to the story to the production design to the character design to the voices to the music you know because we always felt like this is more we wanted to match like gameplay as 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 cinema you know where if, if you were watching someone play it's fun to just encourage them because you can actually comprehend what people are doing watching the gameplay so humor and 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 satire and funny brutality is like that sweet spot chemistry that we were going for embedded in sort of this epic kind of story of a little guy with not much hope who has to find his way. Yeah, and what are you anticipating from kind of this new generation, not just of gamers, but a new generation of hardware and yeah. how Abe's going to fit together? For example, just the way people can broadcast the gameplay now, people yeah. can watch others playing it. How do you think that is going to affect how people interact with the world of Oddworld? Well, I think one of the things with Oddworld was is that we always did pay attention so that, as I was saying, if someone's playing, you know, it's easy to comprehend what's going on if you're watching. And so what we find is the more people that are watching, the funnier it gets because everyone becomes kind of a backseat driver. No, you should do this, watch out for the, oh, you know, and then something crazy happens. And I think with the sharing and the live streaming, uh, I think it'll have a lot of entertainment value on that, but we haven't done it yet, you know? So when we start doing it, I think it'll be, it'll be a learning experience. Hopefully it's a really popular one. We added some other things in, like we have Ragdoll and all the characters now. 
So some really funny moments emerge just with the way they get bent around and situations they get in and series of, of, of mishaps that we never could have predicted, you know, because it's just physics. But I think uh, the nature of the characters, the voices, we had a lot more voices in, you know, because we're going for that humor and depth. Uh, and I think the combination of those events is going to make it more and more sort of like hilarious, really, you know, and, and fun to watch, even if you're not playing. So really, when it comes to sharing, when it comes to Twitch, when it comes to YouTube, you know, and all the possibilities that are going to come from that, whether it's, whether it's uploading to YouTube or sharing on Twitch and uh, uh, Ustream on real time, we're really curious to see how it'll go. I think it'll go well because I, because we always treated it like cinema, you know, that it should sound like a movie. Uh, but uh, you never know until the audience gets their hands on it. So fingers crossed. Hopefully they really enjoy it. Well, thank you so much for your time, hey, Ron. It's Absolutely pleasure. fantastic meeting you. It's great meeting um, you. You guys, make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you subscribe because we've got loads more videos coming from E3. See you soon.